Ah, we can see already something. How cool is that? Welcome back to my channel and today with some interesting technology stuff. We will see beautiful ceramic chips, some microscope session and a nice experiment with an old beamer. So it will be for sure interesting, stay tuned. I'm talking about the DLP or digital light processing and those beautiful DMD chips. DMD means digital micro mirror device. Yeah, digital light processing is a set of chipsets that uses digital micro mirrors to project an image. This technology was invented by Texas Instruments in 1989 and the first DLP based projector was introduced by Digital Projection in 1997. Yeah, digital Projection and Texas Instruments were both awarded Emmy Awards in 1989 for the DLP projector technology. DLP is used in a variety of displays applications as beamers, cinema projectors, industrial applications as well in car headlights for dynamic light angles or projecting something on the street. In DLP projectors the image is created by microscopically small mirrors laid out in a matrix on a semiconductor chip. Yeah, these mirrors are so small that the DMD pixel pitch may be 4 to 5 micrometers or less. Each mirror represents one or more pixels in the projected image. The number of mirrors corresponds to the resolution of the projected image. Yeah, these mirrors can be repositioned rapidly to reflect the light either through the lens or onto a heatsink. So this technology is pretty cool and those kind of chips are combining electrically and mechanically properties at once. In a typical projector with a single chip, colors are produced by placing a color wheel between the white lamp and the DMD chip or by using individual light sources to produce the primary colors. The DLB chip is synchronized with the rotating motion of the color wheel so that the green component is displayed on the DMD when the green section of the color wheel is in front of the lamp. The same is true for the red, blue and other sections. So then let's have a closer look on the chips itself I have here around. Basically they look very pretty with this ceramic body, the gold top and with this big window and the huge die in the middle. The surface of the die looks completely smooth but at the end as mentioned already we have here microscopically small mirrors which are deflecting the light to create an image. So you can call it like a, a display this thing but, but not really it's just uh, deflecting light. Yeah, they are available with different resolutions and today of course up to 4K. So most of the ones I have here uh, are prototypes or engineering samples from Texas Instruments. Uh, we can see this uh, on the back side. Here it's written uh, sample. Also the smaller one I have here, uh, I think this is up to 720p resolution. We can also see here on the back side a sample written. So these are pretty rare uh, chips uh, which are very collectible also at the end and very nice for displaying. Yeah, also this thing I got here from Texas Instruments. This is a nice uh, plastic uh, stand uh, with some technical details written on it and in the middle we have also here a prototype uh, chip glued here for displaying. Also a very very nice piece I got here and of course very cool for displaying. Also another one here. Um, this die is somehow bigger. I don't know the exact resolution of this chip but it has also here written a uh, sample on the back side and we can see here this, this connector. So it's basically uh, like an LGA chip or land grid array. So it's connected with some springs to the PCB and yeah, it depends on the model and the age, that looks a little bit uh, different, but also very interesting. Here another version I have, this is a smaller one, I think it's also up to 720p. You can find of those uh, mass quantities on, on eBay and they don't have a LGA package, they have a lot of small pins here. 
Yeah, and I'm now really curious if I can see these microscopically mechanical mirrors here on the die with my microscope. So uh, this is something we will check out right now. So then let's put the chip under the microscope. I usually start in a corner when I'm inspecting a device, because somewhere there must be also a logo of the manufacturer. So and here we are, let's put it to the focus and yeah, we can see already some nice test structures and some kind of logos. So let's go to the left. Here we have um, the bond wires, we can see them, how they are connected to the, to the bonding pads and these wires are leading at the end to the package. Also some uh, structures we can see here on the connections on the silicon die. And they are sorry for the blurry image. I have to correct the focus always in between a little bit. So then let's go more to the left side. Yeah, so we have here the logo, very nice. The Texas Instruments logo and with a copyright date code of 2001. So this is actually a very old version of this uh, DMD device. So then let's go down to see if the ah yes ah yeah so here we can see already the pattern um, these are actually these small mechanical electromechanical mirrors and these small dots we can see here this seems to be some defective ones so obviously this chip was already heavily in use because there are some defective mirrors um, let's go a little bit up with the magnification yeah Sorry, it's again a little bit blurry. I think this is because there is also a glass in front or between the microscope and the die. And we can see here again this defective uh, micromechanical mirror. I will change a little bit with some filters. Yeah, now it's very nicely visible that here we have a defective uh, pixel at the end. And yeah, with these filters, um, this gives us a little bit better possibilities to inspect a die. Very interesting. I would be curious if there are a certain amount of uh, pixels which are factory default uh, defective or if this is coming up to due to a long term use. If we go down a little bit with the magnification. Ah, okay, so we have here several more of those defective pixels. <laughs> Very interesting to see these small mirrors. So there are a couple of defective ones. Very, very interesting at the end. So and now we come to the very interesting part of this video. I was wondering if we could see something directly on the die or maybe the whole image when it is working. So my idea is to get somehow visible access to a DMD chip in a device while it is deflecting an image. Yeah, and if we would look in the right angle on it, uh, I expect to see uh, maybe something. This would be a really cool experiment to see an image directly here on the die. Yeah, and for that, I have here an old beamer. So this is still in working condition. And this is a small uh, DLP beamer. So usually you can see somewhere uh, on the case also DLP written uh, for the technology which is used inside. So if you ever see an old beamer where DLP is written on it in the trash, don't leave it there. Take it home and disassemble it uh, to get such a nice uh, DM, uh, DMD chip um, out of the of the thing. So my idea now is to disassemble uh, the whole B-bar, get somehow access to the DMD chip wherever it is. Uh, I have no clue right now um, and uh, assemble it back uh, to a state where I can switch it on and use it and maybe we have luck that we can see something on the chip. So the beamer is disassembled now that I can show you already something. Um, just for the overview, here we have our lenses where the image is coming out from the beamer. Usually you have a lot of fans inside the beamer because it is creating a lot of heat. In this case we have here a Xeon um, light source. Always take care if you're dissembling something like that. Uh, these high pressure uh, Xeon lamps, they are driven with high voltage. So if you don't know what you're doing, uh, please never supply such a device when it's disassembled. 
Yeah, over here we have a nice big PCB where we can actually see a huge processor uh, made by Texas Instruments and we can see here also DLP, which means then digital light processor. Yeah, and this chip is at the end controlling the DMD chip um, for the deflection. Also nice here, we can see after the light source inside here this color wheel I was explaining before. So this is the rotating wheel with the different colors um, to create at the end a color image. So very interesting. Uh, I have never seen this until now uh, so far. Yeah, so where is our DLP or the DMD chip at the end? It is really hidden deep inside. Uh, here we have this chamber, as I mentioned already, the light is coming from here through the color wheel, which is synchronized with this processor. And here we can see uh, the DMD chip underneath. So what we can see here is this area with this micro mirrors. So the light is coming into this chamber, get uh, deflected here by some mirrors and lenses uh, to the DMD chip, um, which is creating the image and coming out here uh, of this lenses so and as i mentioned already the idea is um, if we can see something here on the surface of the die uh, when the chip is deflecting light or creating an image also very interesting here on the side we can see this pcb here which is connected to the upper pcb um, where the dm the chip is located uh, on the back side we have also a huge heatsink so it seems that this uh, dmd devices uh, needs to get also cooled very strongly and that they are creating a lot of heat so interesting uh, i guess this is because of uh, the deflected light which is uh, not coming out in the front which needs to get deflected and and so this energy need to get also absorbed somehow therefore i guess we have here a huge heat sink and the device is heating up at the end so very very interesting and yeah i'm looking forward for our test here now Yeah, so we are almost ready for our first try here. Um, to get anything displayed on the chip, um, we need to keep the light source installed because uh, if I remove here the Xeon lamp, um, it is not in working order. It is recognizing the bulb is defective and it will not show anything on our chip. Yeah, but due to the fact that these Xeon lamps are very, very bright and you should uh, for sure avoid looking directly into this uh, bright uh, light beam, I blocked here the hole where usually uh, would come the light out uh, with some metal plate. Um, so this uh, gives us the possibility to have a few on the chip here without getting uh, blinded by the light source here. Yeah, so then let's give some power to the beamer. So, okay, now the LEDs are on here and yeah, let's switch it on. So very nice, we could see the color wheel is spinning up now. Um, yeah, and the light source is getting brighter. So usually these Xeon lamps, it takes a while until they reach uh, their full brightness. Yeah, and over here we have the chip and I'm curious. Ah, we can see already something. How cool is that? We can see already something. Very nice. Very, very interesting. So I have here my very improvised uh, setup um, with a light source which I can move a little bit around um, to get the right angle uh, with the hope that we can uh, take a nice shot of the die here um, while something is running. So I would also try some <laughs> Tom and Jerry uh, if we can see something here nicely. Uh, I covered here with some duct tape, tape um, the light source again a little bit uh, that it's not blinding so much. Yeah, so then let's give it a try and I'm really curious now of the outcome. So and look at that, we can clearly see the image here. Fascinating. I was not expecting to, to see it that nice. How cool is that? And no, in this video I will not play Doom on it. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's really interesting if you imagine that there are just thousands of small mirrors physically moving to deflect the light. Crazy technology. Actually, to see here an image the right angle of the light and the camera is very important. What is still not clear to me is how it's done with different intensities of the pixels. To deflect the light it's clear, but due to the static light source I would be interested how this can work. Maybe there are a certain frequency of each mirror? I have no idea. Leave me some comments if you know a bit more about the technology. Yeah, and at the end this was a very interesting topic for me and I had a lot of fun making this video. This technology is very fascinating to me and all that packed into a beautiful package. Yeah, this combination makes this chip to a super cool part in any collection. I hope you liked the video and if yes please thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.